So since I'm doing this now in batches and we're doing two episodes per review, I definitely needed to take a ton of notes. Ladies and gentlemen. Hey, what's going on everybody? It's your boy Will and I am back with a spoiler review for episodes two and three of She-Hulk Attorney at Law. So this, these are going to be spoiler reviews for the latest two episodes of She-Hulk. So if you haven't seen the episodes yet, please make sure that you pause this video, go watch these wonderful comedic and funny episodes, and then come back and hear my thoughts on the two episodes. And if this happens to be your first time and you're new to this sort of thing, hi, my name is Will, and I do geeky stuff on the internet. I do a whole bunch of geeky stuff, like, for so much. <laughs> it's, it's a lot at times, but it's fun. And I do like reviews, reactions, and a whole bunch of nine yards, some drinking, some gaming. But I try to have fun with it, and I hope you have fun as well watching these. And if you do, if you would, subscribe to the channel. Uh, I'd really love to get to know you. And, you know, it'd be awesome if you helped me make this channel grow. Make my channel grow! <laughs> So if you haven't seen some of my previous videos talking about this, I've decided for She-Hulk, since A, they are about like half an hour long episodes, and they're much more relaxed episodes and stuff like that, which actually still have some pretty good in-depth character analysis, which I really like. It's still like a comedy, and it's just meant to be fun and meta and not to take itself super duper seriously. I decided to do them like in groups, and I'm really glad I decided to do it with these first two episodes of doing this because they were all focused on Jen's identity being revealed to the world, trying to learn to navigate being a Hulk and somewhat of a celebrity, but also on taking on her first case of trying to get parole for Emil Blonsky, aka The Abomination, played by Tim Roth, who is back for these two episodes. So it actually makes sense to do these together. <laughs> so of course, at the end of episode one, Jen, she's she turned into a Hulk and saved everybody in the courtroom from Titania. I'm going to pronounce that right at some point. Titana. Ti Titana? Titana. <sighs> Titana. Um, which basically thrust her into the spotlight. And it's a lot for her to take in. It's so much that she unfortunately loses her job, but is quickly snatched up by G K and H? G L K and H which was the rival law firm that she was actually going up against in court. And they decided that they want to start a superhero division, and but they wanted She-Hulk as the lead of that new division, which is completely against what Jen really wants. But she's kind of like in a, between a rock and a hard place, so you got to make that money. And it is something that she's going to grapple with, with, with throughout the entire series, accepting this new role that she had, because she really just wants to be a lawyer, she wants to focus on the stuff that she went to school for, and not be thrust into this whole spotlight. But that's kind of how the cookie crumbles when it comes to living in this world that we call the MCU. Um, I really like a lot of the Easter eggs in episode two. Um, like I said, we get the Abomination back, who is her first client, and she has to defend him because the abomination is a villain but is he really a villain which i really like the interaction between jen and emil when emil kind of just talks about how it's really messed up that he, everything that he did was very much so orders from our government because he was thought he thought he was taking out a threat being the hulk aka her cousin but He's free and living his best life, and he's in jail. And it's not his fault that the serum corrupted, corrupted him and made him break Harlem, technically. It's an interesting, interesting way of looking at it because, yeah, he did everything he wanted to do in The, in the Incredible Hulk to try to be a hero. He thought he was going to turn out to be bloody Captain America, like he said. But no, he ends up taking the serum to be a good soldier and then ends up being labeled as a villain basically he did bad things no one's saying he didn't but obviously the serum does corrupt certain people 
who take it. We saw all of this during Falcon and Winter Soldier. So that was actually a really nice connective tissue that they had in episode two and really kind of gave a little bit more sympathy to Emil's character because it's it's very understandable when you think about it from that aspect. But I do like how he's a lot more jovial. Not jovial, but he's a lot more zen because he has found a way as well to control his transformations. He chooses not to become abomination. So it's a really cool sort of way of looking at characters differently, especially characters that we haven't seen in a long time. We really haven't seen Abomination in-depthly since The Incredible Hulk. I mean, we got the little teaser in Shang-Chi when he was fighting with Wong in the fight arena, which that becomes a major factor at the end of the episode and into episode three. But I really like that interaction and I like how they're using him his character in the series especially kind of feels feels like a lot of the teases that they set up were very much for the thunderbolts that we're going to be getting at the end of phase, at the end of phase five which is rumored to have him on that team of, of villains as well so it'll be interesting to see how they tie that into that upcoming series as well Oops, sorry for shaking the camera Another thing from their conversation, which was like one of the like huge parts of the episode, is that you 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 find out that um, Emil and Bruce kind of reconciled a couple years ago, and it, was, it had the best joke in the episode. That fight was so many years ago. I'm a completely different person now, literally. <laughs> I I shouldn't have to explain the joke. You should know, but okay, here's the joke. Okay, all good? Great. There's also another tease in the episode when Jen's kind of looking for work and she's on the couch with her friend Nikki after she gets dropped from her law firm, where you see not only talking about the giant man-shaped statue in the, in the Pacific, referencing the Eternals, but we also get a reference of Wolverine from the X-Men where you talk about a man in a bar fight was using metal claws coming out of his hands. Another little tease for X-Men, but we still have no confirmation, but I like how this series is able to play with all these different things and insert all these little jokes and meta jokes, even commentary on what it is to just be a successful woman. Cause like the whole thing with episode two, when Jen loses her job, her, her really misogynistic, co-worker was the one that was like oh so now you have superpower that i can see how you use that against it it's like why would you even think that because you're a dick but also the fact that when she gets the new job at the law firm they're basically yeah we want you for your new hulk power not necessarily because you're a good lawyer but they do want her because she is a good lawyer but obviously they want her specifically as a hulk which she of course is not happy about she definitely doesn't like all the spotlight on her and that's something that she's just going to have to come to grips with throughout the entire series what it seems like it's, it's so much fun watching tatiana mislani play jen walter she's nailing the role i love her performance i love i love nikki her best friend she's really trying to help her you know cope with this but it, also to embrace this new lifestyle or this new side of herself that you know she doesn't want to but but Nikki is such a good supportive friend and she also has good supportive parents because she has to unfortunately or fortunately go to her parents for dinner and her dad I forget the actor's name but he was in Perfect Strangers it's this guy right here it's a, I like how these last two series between Miss Marvel and She-Hulk have given us really nice supportive parents because she makes the joke about most superheroes being billionaires or you know adult orphans and it's nice to see that our most recent two Disney Plus series have really had supportive families and structures and stuff like that where they don't have to necessarily go through all this crazy stuff alone and it, it makes for a lighter watching experience, which is probably why some people probably feel like this series is like off the deep end because it's not taking itself too seriously. It's a comedy. It's not going to take itself super duper seriously, but it does have serious moments, especially like the conversation between Jen and Emil and really getting his perspective of how his life has been. So episode two does wrap up with Jen deciding to take the case, but 
there's a wrinkle because the footage from when Abomination fought Wong at the nightclub in Shang-Chi surfaced and now she has to navigate that all through episode 3 which is the people versus Emil Blonsky where Jen has to try to convince people not only that uh, Emil is a good person and has grown but also that he is in full control and he deserves to have a second chance. Um, there is a side story in episode 3 where um, her co-worker, her new co-worker, has to defend her old co-worker. I'm forgetting names, but <laughs> because he dated uh, Elvin Asgardian from New Asgard, who shapeshifted into Megan the Trainer. Sorry, Megan the Stout. Megan the Stallion. I sorry. Oh, God, this is gonna make me feel so old. You ever know when you watch? Like a music award, like let's say, let's say if you watch the Grammys or an MTV mu Music Award, you realize you get to a certain age when you don't recognize a lot of the artists on screen anymore, and that's where I am right now. But I do remember that Megan the Stallion was going to have a cameo in this episode, and it makes sense because her ex co worker, the really misogynistic guy, thought he was good enough to date Megan the Stallion, dude. What the. Fuck? No. Like, this guy, I really want him to not die. That's harsh. I want him to get hit by something very hard. Potentially, Jen's fist would be awesome. But that's sort of like the B subplot, and they make a joke later in the episode where Jen, like, you know, she breaks the fourth wall and basically said, this is where the A and B storylines connect. I really like that little scene, but that's sort of a subplot. But the main talking point of the, uh, the episode is the release of Emil and also how Jen needs to take control of the story because everyone is talking about her when she feels like it's only because she's taking on this high profile case and, and Nikki's trying to tell her, no, this is because of you. And I like how Marvel has apparently looked at a lot of TikTok and YouTube comments from really terrible people and used it to kind of put a spotlight on people are terrible and this is why. <laughs> so I thought that was fun. So it's not, it's not a fun subject in real life, but I like how Marvel is able to throw it back in those terrible people's faces and show them how stupid they are. Because it's a comedy. Deal with it. Emil admits that, you know, it wasn't his choice to leave. He was taken by Wong. And so we get our cameo of Benedict Cumber Benedict Cumberback. And we get our cameo of Benedict Wong playing Wong in the episode. And I love how deadpan, like... <laughs> He has the dry sense of humor like I do, and I really love that about his character. And he has to be the star witness to help get Emil's, you know, pardon through because he's responsible for taking them out. And we find out it's mainly not necessarily to help Emil, but it's to help Wong try to get practice and become a Sorcerer Supreme, which is kind of messed up because you took this poor guy out. He's like, this is why I love, I like how they've shaped Emil's character to really just be a guy who was wrongly accused for something that really wasn't completely under his control and the real people who are responsible never got charged with stuff. Mainly like Thunderbolt Ross is who I'm referring to in that, in that standpoint. I didn't need the B storyline with the, with the former co-worker and him getting swindled by a shapeshifter and all that stuff. It was really meant to kind of set up more so this idea of maybe finding a way to take away Jen's powers. And that might be something she looks to do through a few episodes of the series but probably by the end of it realize that this is her and this is who she is and that you know her life's better with it even though it's a little bit more chaotic that's why i'm thinking that whole purpose and scene was meant to for it's also just an excuse to get megan the stallion in the episode i'm probably saying her name wrong and i'm so sorry i've probably listened to your music i just don't realize i have uh, we do also get our first debut of the wrecking crew who were a like a like i want to say like c or d level spider-man villains i think that's where the wrecking crew first came from but they're basically regular people that have enchanted as guardian weapons that all look like construction tools and they try to jump Jen for some reason, which we later find out that they're trying to steal some of her blood for their boss, who we don't know who, who the boss is, but somebody's trying to maybe get 
her Hulk powers, which is of course a very dangerous thing, and that's something that will probably be revealed later in the season. But, but episode three, the main focus was the court case with Emil and him kind of trying to lay out this case that yes, he is a reformed individual and even showed off that he has the ability to control his transformation into abomination, which the court is terrified of, but it, it is important because it shows that A, he is in complete control of himself and B, that he is also very much reformed. With all that evidence and everything like that and Wong's confession that he was responsible, they allowed the pardon of Emil Blomsky. So Jen got her first win, albeit that Wong did com admit to committing a federal crime, which he quickly portaled his way out of the out of the secure facility to probably not have to deal, deal with that sort of thing. So the episode does end, end with Jen being jumped by the Wrecking Crew, but she easily knocks him around and takes care of it. There seems to be like a little for little foreboding about what that means and probably some concern from her, but also that her life is no longer normal and it's just something that she's going to have to grip with within the coming episodes. So that basically wraps up episode three as well. There were two two post credit scenes are like one for each episode episode two was basically jen helping her parents around the house as she hulk like moves himself and do all the fun little things like that and then the post credit scene for episode three was basically jen representing megan the stallion and they do a little dance and stuff like that and they do some twerking and talk about like she's willing to kill for her and and megan was like okay calm it down and that's, that's basically what episode two and three were. So I like that they were basically contained primarily to the the parole hearing for the abomination, Emil Blomsky, and Jen learning that she can't hide and be anonymous anymore. She's going to have to take charge of some of these interviews and where the narrative is going with her story and learn to embrace it but maybe potentially also look for a way to remove that sort of thing from her life i don't think that is going i think she's going to be given the opportunity but she's going to probably turn it down and continue her life as she hulk not necessarily a superhero but as a superpowered being living in a superpowered world so that's my best guess of where this series is sort of taking us it is a lot of fun it is very casual entertaining television watching it's really it's really fun it's really refreshing too because you don't have to sit here and speculate with 80 different things you can just watch the series and enjoy it tatiana Maslany does a fantastic job as jennifer walters i've been loving the cameo so far i know of only one more big cameo and everything else coming from this point forward i really don't think we've seen any major clips for which is exciting so which means i'm curious to see what other sort of you know teases and cameos and stuff we might get in future episodes which jen did kind of tell us straight up you know don't expect it to be every week i think we might get them and get it every week but i won't be disappointed if we don't because i really like the jen as a character and i think the series is fun and it's nice to just have a fun relaxing series for a change. So that is my review of episodes two and three of She-Hulk Attorney at Law. Let me know what you thought of the episodes in the comments down below. Let me know some other Easter eggs and spoilers I might have missed. Thank you so much for checking out this and all my videos. I really do appreciate it. If you, if you did enjoy it, why not consider subscribing to the channel? Like I said, I'd love to get to know you and it would be awesome if you would help me help this channel get a little bit bigger. It'd be so much fun, and I could do so much other stuff, and I've got other stuff that I'm going to be working on this weekend, some other videos. I've got a new drinking video that I'm going to do this weekend, I promise, and I will get it out by next weekend. You can follow me on a lot of different social media platforms listed at the end of this video. I've got a ton of videos on the channel right now that you're more than welcome to check out. Like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff, and as always, until next time. I will catch you later. Hey, thanks for watching this video. If you did like this video, why not give me a thumbs up and share it with your friends? You can subscribe to the channel by clicking on my gorgeous little face right over there. You can follow me on all the various social media platforms right below. And last but certainly not least, if you've got a few extra minutes, why not check out one of the lovely videos floating right over here. Later.